hello dear students today's lecture is part 3 of variation in chromosome number and this lecture deals with euploidy so uh, this we have this slide we have already discussed in previous lecture that uh, euploidy is when the numerical change in chromosome number represents exact multiple of its basic chromosome number and it also involves polyploidy while in aneuploidy the numerical change is not exact multiple of gametic uh, number and it includes hyperploidy and hyperploidy so what is polyploidy polyploidy arises either due to fusion of one egg with two sperms or by failure of mitosis in somatic cells where chromosomes have duplicated but unable to separate so uh, this is polyploidy can be induced with a chemical or it happens naturally also now um, when we discuss mono polyploidy we also discuss monoploids monoploids are not polyploids but it this term is related with haploid because haploid and monoploids are sometimes confused confusing terms so let us differentiate between a monoploid and haploid yeah. the monoploid term is restricted for plants which develop through parthenogenesis and because they develop due to unfertilized eggs so they have only one set of chromosomes in somatic cells like here you, you can see the example is barley so here the somatic cells have seven chromosomes only and this is present only in one um, set so this is 2n is equal to x is equal to 7 this is barley similarly um, you can uh, see that if the somatic number represents 10 and 10 is only present in the monovalent state uh, so we will call it a monoploid while what are haploid haploid is restricted for haploids which are formed from diploid organisms for example you can see here that 2n is equal to 3x is equal to 21 this is a haploid of the diploid plant 2n is equal to 6x is equal to 42 it is not a diploid but it is a hexaploid plant so half of the cx a 6x is 3x so in somatic cells there will be 42 chromosomes which are present in six sets and in haploids they will be having 21 chromosomes which will be haploid Euploidy is a sub part of heteroploidy, and heteroploidy leads with deals with variation in chromosome number, as we have already discussed. Uh, euploidy is when the numerical change in chromosome number is such that it represents exact multiple of haploid chromosome number, and in this we will discuss monoploidy, diploidy. polyploidy in the previous two lectures we have already discussed what is aneuploidy and their examples now what are uh, uh, the types of polyploids so as we have already discussed euploidy is when the numerical changes in chromosome number is exact multiple of basic chromosome number and in this we will be studying polyploidy so polyploidy is when there are more than two sets of chromosomes and polyploids are of four types autoploids alloploids uh, autoalloploids and segmental alloploids autoploids so involves duplication of the basic same basic set of chromosome so the term is self explanatory autoploids means auto plus ploidy so auto means duplication of the same genome for example marigold lily snapdragon cynodon these are examples of autoploid so you can see that the size of the flowers is very large because of the extra set of chromosomes now what is alloploidy alloploidy involves duplication of two or more genomes from different species they are also called amphiploids and many of our cultivated species are alloploids or amphiploids the example one of the examples is wheat the third classification is autoalloploidy which involves duplication of both auto uh, duplication of both the same genome and uh, the different genome so it includes auto as well as 
alloploidy and they are always above hexaploid so it means that they are more than um, they have more than six sets of chromosomes well the fourth is segmental alloploidy which involves duplication of two related genomes now you will understand all these terms with the help of this uh, flow chart and you can refer pk gupta for this so like here you can see say this is a diploid plant when it is uh, the duplicate uh, diploid plant has two uh, sets of um, aa or two or two set of uh, um, genome uh, its genome has two copies of a which represents homologous pairs of paternal and uh, maternal chromosomes now suppose this chromosome duplication takes place by natural means or by, ke by through chemical treatment so the diploid plant um, which is having two sets of chromosomes it will be duplicated to four sets of chromosomes and it becomes a tetraploid now here when you see suppose this is another diploid plant b1 which has genome as b1 b1 so now if it is duplicated it will also become it will also become a tetraploid now suppose hybridization hybridization takes place between a a genome and b1 b1 genome so this is a hybrid a b1 and when it is duplicated it becomes a uh, tetraploid but this tetraploid is uh, which has four copies of uh, chromosomes two of a a and two of b1 b1 it will be a tetraploid but this will be a allo tetraploid because l it is involving duplication of two different genomes a a and b1 b1 now when this is uh, duplicated it becomes a octaploid and this octaploid involves the duplication of both a a as well as uh, b b and four copies of a and four copies of b1 are present so this becomes auto allo octaploid because it involves the duplication of the same genome as well as different genomes now the next term we learned was about segmental polyploidy so what is segmental polyploidy segmental polyploidy is when the duplication involves duplication of the uh, related genomes for example here you can see that b1 b2 b1 b1 and b2 b2 uh, is written here so b1 b1 is one genome and b2 b2 is another genome which are related to each other so when suppose uh, uh, suppose uh, b1 b1 and b2 b2 uh, hybridization takes place between these two plants and say hybrid b1 b2 is formed so when chromosome duplication takes place in this it leads to a tetraploid which will be considered as uh, a segmental tetraploid because the genomes are related with each other b1 b1 and b2 b2 probably some part is homologous and some part is non-homologous now suppose we hybridize this segmental tetraploid and allo tetraploid so this hybrid will be having this uh, chromosome composition a b1 b1 b2 so this will be a 1 2 3 4 four sets of chromosomes are present so this will be a tetraploid and this tetraploid will be a allo tetraploid so there are other examples like here you can see that this diploid b2 b2 has given rise to a auto tetraploid and when hybridization takes place between uh, this tetraploid allo tetraploid and this diploid b2 b2 then auto tetraploid is uh, formed um, um, uh, no when b2 b2 has uh, duplicated so this is a auto tetraploid while when hybridization takes place between this allo tetraploid and this triploid a triploid is formed and this is a allo triploid and when this allo tri tri uh, triploid is duplicated this is a allo hexaploid so i hope this chart is clear to you and you can refer pk gupta for this so what is autoploidy autoploidy can be induced artificially using alkaloid like colchicine which is obtained from the plant colchicum automail and colchicine it induces an dna duplication but inhibits synthesis of spindle fiber so the chromosomes duplicate but they are not able to separate from each other and so they they are doubled in the cell and this was discovered by black algae 
so colchicine obtained from colchicum automail was uh, discovered by black ansley and it induces or uh, uh, endo reduplication of chromosome so now we will discuss why uh, the polyploids are or the autoploids are desirable for consumers or farmers although autoploids especially triploids uh, which which are made by hybridization with the help of by hybridization of a tetraploid plant in a diploid plant they will be sterile and they produces seedless fruits uh, because they do not have normal meiosis so the fertile gametes are not formed so we will consider we will assume that because the uh, the plants are not setting seeds so they will be useless for the consumer but such plants are sometimes desirable for the consumers where the consumer do not want seeds like watermelon melon and uh, grapes and banana so in those cases if we can propagate the plant vegetatively uh, even when the uh, fruit is not having seed it will not uh, matter it will uh, um, rather it will be beneficial for the consumer because he wants a seedless plant so autoploids especially the triploids are desirable if the plant is vegetatively propagated like sugarcane which can be vegetatively propagated and if the uh, plant is um, polyploid so it 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 will yield more because the size will be more um, similarly banana if you want plant to produce seedless fruits like watermelon and melon so seedless watermelon uh, they were produced by h kihara in japan so these are uh, some of the desirable features of the polyploids we will be learning some more examples in subsequent slides and uh, oh, let us uh, uh, let us discuss one more example of polyploid and this example is of alloploids so what are alloploids we have just discussed that it involves duplication of two or more genomes and they belong uh, to do, and they are also called amphiploids. So many of our cultivated species are alloploids, and one of the uh, famous examples is of hexaploid beech wheat, which we eat, uh, which we eat as chapatis, breads, etc. So alloploidy, uh, the first example of alloploidy was reported by Karapanchko, uh, and the example is Raphanobrassica, which is a allo tetraploid. How it was made? It was made. Uh, by hybridization with a, a hybridization of Raphanus sativus and um, Brassica oleracea. So if you see the parents are Raphanus sativus which, which is your radish and Brassica oleracea which is your cabbage. Uh, so when these two plants were um, uh, uh, when these two plants were um, hybridized both the plants are 2n is equal to 18 chromosomes and this is also 2n is equal to 18 chromosome but brassica and raphanus they are uh, actually belonging to different genera so this becomes an intergeneric hybridization when the hybridization was done the hybridization took place but it resulted in a sterile plant because all the 18 chromosomes they were of a different uh, kind and so the 18 mono univalents or monovalents are form, were formed with, and the plant was sterile while when the plant was uh, when the chromosome duplication took place 18 chromosomes duplicated to 36 chromosomes and this was a fertile plant so among many sterile plants Carapanchico found a few fertile plants and these tetraploid plants will were um, named as Raphanobrassica. Although this uh, plant was successful, but Carapanchico wanted uh, the results uh, as uh, roots of Raphanus and sh and uh, head of Brassica, but he got the opposite results. But this was the fir uh, first example uh, which was considered as successful in alloploidy. So I hope this topic is clear to you, and we will be meeting in the next lecture with the fourth part of this lecture thank you students